Hi everybody, good to see you back. One of the questions that I've gotten asked or emailed about is, does the SD card that you use matter in the Fuji X-T3 or for that matter some other cameras that shoot 4K video? Now, I personally have looked around at a few different blogs or reviews, written stuff online, and there's been generally people have wanted to steer you to these more expensive cards. The question is, Will this cheaper old card that I have work? Can I just keep on using it? Or will I need to use one of these newer ones? So let's go do a couple of quick tests um, that I think you're going to find pretty informative. And I'll let you know how this works out. All right, first up in my test is was the old 32 gig SanDisk card rated for 45 megs per second. And it honestly does that. and. I got about 30 or 60 seconds of 4K recorded and the camera quit. So the general assumption is no, these old 32 gig cards, any of these 45, 50 meg per second cards are not going to cut it. Next, here is a SanDisk. It's a newer card. I bought maybe a year ago. It's rated for 95 megs per second and it's a 128 gig card. They're about $40 or so, depending. Um, and that's getting a real one, not a fake one. Uh, these have worked fine. They test. If I do any tests on them with the Blackmagic design uh, to speed tests, they instantly come up to speed. On the readers that I have around here, they average 80, maybe 85 megs per second. So they're pretty close to hitting their spec for read and write. And that's great. They've worked so far flawlessly in the Fujifilm camera. And now let's talk about the expensive cards. Let's take a look at the Sony M card. Now this isn't Sony's best card. They make faster cards. This is their uh, second one down from the top of the line. The most expensive Sony cards are really expensive. But this card it was a 128. It's rated to write 100 megs per second, read 200, and this card cost about $80 or twice the price of the SanDisk. Now this is one of the cards that Fuji recommends you can use with this camera. I've read on a few different blog sites that they also say you should use this card and they work fine. The one thing I find weird about them is when you do a speed test on them, the SanDisks the SanDisks instantly hit their rated speed or the speed they normally run at, which is about 80 megs per second. And these guys, they'll ramp up. They'll go like 20, 45, 80 on the third series of writes. So I find that strange and a little disconcerting that they basically don't instantly hit their speed. Why? I don't know. On the card to go slow. But you'd figure second cycle, it'd be hitting its numbers, and they don't. It kind of scares me a little bit, but so far I probably shot about 10 hours worth of material on the X-T3 with these cards, and they've operated flawlessly, so they're okay. They work fine, it seems to be. Likewise, I've got probably a couple hours worth of shooting on the SanDisk card, and it has also performed flawlessly so far. Now that the new firmware update is out, which allows you to write files larger than four gigs, thank you Fuji for fixing that. We really appreciate that. It'll be interesting to see if this card ever gives me any problems, but I'm kind of suspecting not. I think it'll probably work fine. So I think the quick conclusion is do some research out there. You don't necessarily have to buy the most expensive cards. Of course, disclaimers, your mileage may vary, all that blah, blah, blah. The most expensive cards should always perform. But some of these mid-priced cards are a little bit cheaper, like half, may actually do just fine, at least if you're sticking to the sand discs. I've had a few transcends that I've used, which have been fine. Other cards, you know, whatever. And of course, like anything else, if you do a little bit of Googling around, you're going to find horror stories and love stories about pretty much any manufacturer's card. And next time... We're going to talk about Lexar because Lexar is not going to be getting any love from me. And that's a whole other video related to C300 and CFast. Catch you then. And don't be afraid to leave some comments and thoughts down below.